All right, well, welcome back to the third episode of Talking Schmack. I hope you enjoyed last week's episode with outfielder Josh Clark. Got a little glimpse into his life and, and what it's like to, to be an athlete here at Valpo. And, uh, again, we hope you liked what you saw. So this past weekend was big on campus and, and in the, round, uh, the town of Valparaiso. We had our annual Popcorn Fest, which, if you don't know, Orville Redenbacher... Hello, I'm Orville Redenbacher from Valparaiso, Indiana. Worked here, owned a business here, started Popcorn here. So uh, I know he had a house in town that, that he lived in, and every year we celebrate that. And, and just the, I don't know if it's the invention of Popcorn or what it is, but uh, the celebration of Popcorn. So um, it, it was big on campus. We had actually our baseball team goes out, and they uh, do some community service work out there at, at the event. So... Uh, they were out there that afternoon. Uh, it's a little cooler for them this week, so um, and this year. So I know they enjoyed it a little bit more. But again, it was just good to give back and, and to be visible in the community, and uh, uh, like I said, giving back for this one event. So we actually are fortunate. We have two Orvs in, in our lives here: Orville Redenbacher, as I mentioned, and our bus driver Orv Yoder, who has been doing this for a while. So a uh, little uh, shout out to Orv there. So uh, we'll see you soon, buddy. Um, this, this week uh, starts our fall practice, so Monday uh, we kick off our fall, uh, and, and for those that aren't familiar with the, the schedule, we're allowed 20 hours a week in, in, uh, in college baseball to practice a week. So for us that means um, including weightlifting, so I'll start there. We weightlift on uh, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, and, and actually Friday morning. We do that three days a week um, for roughly 45 minutes to an hour each time. It uh, gives our guys an opportunity to start getting a baseline in uh, with their strength. Um, because as we go in for the winter time, uh, we'll start to gain. But but again, we'll do it three days a week, uh, starting out now. Just because it's uh, like I said, it, we are competing, we are playing, so we don't want to get them too uh, too tired. But again, we still want to start to build strength in, in that department. So, um, and as we mentioned, we're allowed our 20 hours a week in practice. So what that for us is is usually five or six days a week. We'll go three three and a half hours a day, whatever it comes out to, as long as we don't go over our 20. Um, and we'll start our fall practice. So we'll have our, uh, it's, it's a good opportunity because our team is there for the first time. For, uh, this past week we were doing individuals and you know it's four on ones, we don't really see each other. Now we're all together for the first time. So it's uh, an exciting phase for us. Um, a lot of times uh, during this time of the year we'll, we'll introduce our bond coverages. We have a lot of different, different guys on the team. We have our new freshmen, we have our newcomers from junior college or maybe our four year transfers that come in and they don't know the way we run things. So. We'll introduce our bunt coverages, our um, you know our team defense. So we'll talk about positioning. Uh, we'll talk about our offensive signs, pitching signs, whatever it may be. Uh, so we start to get everybody on the same page. So again, it's a it's a big time for us to build uh, because everyone is there together. So um, as we go through the week, uh, we'll we'll play inter squad games Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Usually three, four innings, whatever it may be, depending on how many guys are pitching. Um, but for us, it's just an opportunity to compete every single day. Uh, we play games, uh, we, we want to see what the freshmen can do, the new guys, and, and obviously the returners to see if there's any strides that have been made. So um, Wednesday actually is, is our uh, competition Wednesday. So uh, it's, it's a day where we strictly compete. Uh, it's in different areas. It may be a uh, bunt contest, it may be conditioning, it may be hitting, uh, strike throwing, whatever it is. It's something different every week uh, that we're just getting out there uh, competing. Uh, guys seem to like it because I know that it's going to be a very competitive day, and and again, that's what we're all about. So again, we're going to we're going to devote a whole day to that, and then hopefully makes us better in, in the long run. As we go, uh, Wilson Sporting Goods will be coming out. Uh, last week, Easton came out to demo some bats, and, and we're going to decide what kind of to, to, uh, bats to use this year. We let the players decide whatever feels good, whatever they like. Uh, we're all for. So again, we want them to be comfortable in the box and on the field. Wilson comes out on Monday, and um, we're going to give them a go too. So again, we, we like to have a little demo day for them. They hit, they they feel some ground balls, whatever it may be. We want to see what we're going to be using this year, and we give them that opportunity too. So, all right, now we'll get to our question of the week and the tweet of the week. Question of the week comes from at Hanson two three Kim. It says, if you could read one person's mind, whose would it be and why? Tough question, deep question. I like it. Um, Mind reading, I, I'm somewhat of a mind reader. I've been married for close to 17 years now, so I've had the task of trying to read my wife's mind, uh, which is al always isn't the best, but I've done pretty good at that, um, and, and she appreciates that. But as far as whose mind I'd like to read, I would say uh, our athletic director, Mark LaBarbera. Um, I think everyone wants to know what their boss thinks of them or what they're doing, actually what he thinks of this show. This may be our last show. Who knows uh, when he sees this. But, um, you know, I think just to, to get uh, inside his mind and to think how 
uh, things are going with the program, with the school, with the, the, the players, all that kind of stuff, I think that'd be very interesting. And uh, at this point, I think that's the mind that I would like to read. So, um, And our tweet of the week comes from at, at Grant Inman. It says, these guys, obviously, I'm talking about him in Montana for some reason. I don't know why, maybe they're just goofy. But um, me in Montana, in the elevator, he sees a sign that says Hoosier. Montana says, what's a Hoosier? Shaking my head. So obviously, again, uh, young kid, California kid, very sheltered, nothing east of, you know, the California border. The Hoosier is yeah, obviously from Indiana, and uh, hopefully that's been explained to him now, and, and hopefully he knows what that is. So um, those two guys, man, they, they're, they're teaching each other a lot about life in that room. So um, again, if you have questions, send them at Schmack53. Uh, John Leffler, by the way, we do still... Uh, do the gauntlet, and, and of course, nobody is safe. So, uh, thank you for that. Well, a little shout out to Karen Avery, our head women's volleyball coach, and, and the rest of the volleyball team. They started out nine and zero this year, best in school history. Phenomenal run, ladies. Keep it up. Um, I know once conference starts, it's going to be a battle, but I know you guys can hang in there and uh, to, to take 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 the crown home for sure. Bring another title back. All right. Uh, that's all for this week. You know, tune in next week. Chad Jacob, another freshman, or actually sophomore. Sorry, Chad. Uh, is going to be taking a tour of the facilities and showing everybody what it's like around here, what we have, what we use on a daily basis, and uh, giving you guys just a little bit of a, uh, an insight on that. So um, take care. We'll see you next week. And, of course, hashtag PTD.